Reapers are the ultimate scouts. They essentially do everything a Phantom Ranger does, but better. While Rangers have to invest in certain abilities to scout, and aren't able to contribute much while concealed, Reapers start as superior scouts, and eventually get several ways to deal damage without breaking concealment. Of the three faction classes added in War of the Chosen, Reapers are probably the one I use the most often. Unlike most classes in the game, the Reaper doesn't really benefit a lot from attachments. They have very good accuracy, and are usually used as a finisher, rather than a straight damage dealing class. There is one ability that you will eventually want to get an expanded magazine and repeater for, but for most of the game you can go without attachments. If you have some spare, a laser sight could be a decent addition for another ability. After that, the only other attachment worth considering is a hair trigger, but at least for me, my reapers aren't usually shooting enough to really benefit from it. Reapers don't get a utility slot by default. If you unlock tactical rigging as a random XCOM ability though, you could probably take a special ammo, such as dragon rounds for the damage, or possibly talon rounds for increased crit chance if you get a certain ability. Their three ability branches are Stealth, Saboteur, and Marksman. Stealth is the smallest, with a few scouting skills, Saboteur focuses on explosives, and Marksman has a handful of shooting abilities. There are two base abilities for Reapers. The first, Shadow, is their defining ability. It behaves similarly to the Ranger's Phantom and Conceal abilities, just combined into one. You start all missions with a unique form of concealment called Shadow, even on missions such as Retaliations, and you get one charge to regain it if you break concealment. Shadow is vastly superior to Phantom though, because it has a bunch of unique benefits. The most obvious one is that whenever you take a shot, instead of immediately breaking concealment, you roll a chance to maintain Shadow instead. On your first shot, by default, this is a 50-50 chance, and it decreases with every successful roll. This means that even if you need to take a shot with the Reaper, there's a decent chance that you'll keep Shadow without having to reconceal. There are some other actions which also cause a Shadow roll, such as clearing the dazed status, but you don't see them very often. The next major benefit is that your detection range starts at 3 tiles, meaning enemies have to be stood right next to you in order to spot you. Successful shadow rolls increase this range, but it's usually still less than a phantom ranger. Finally, while in shadow, your movement range is increased by roughly 38%. This means you're easily able to get ahead of the squad, and swing wide around enemies to avoid them when they scatter. Shadow is a great ability that makes scouting much safer throughout the game. Their other base ability, Claymore, is a unique type of explosive. By default, it does 5 damage in a 3 tile area, and it shreds 2 armor. You get 1 charge, and throwing it is not a turn ending action. Unlike most explosives, it doesn't detonate by itself. You have to set it off by shooting it, or some other form of damage. Both throwing and shooting it doesn't break shadow, and you can also shoot it with your other units. The biggest handicap when it comes to the claymore is that, for unactivated pods, you need to be close enough to both throw and shoot it. If you throw it one turn, then the pod may patrol away before you get a chance to shoot it. Getting this close risks the pod accidentally patrolling into you before, or running into you after you blow it up. Otherwise, this is a great way to cripple a pod before you activate them in the early game. 5 damage means you're able to instantly kill basic troopers. It also doesn't take long before you're able to upgrade it. At corporal rank, you unlock remote start and blood trail. Remote Start is an active ability where you shoot an environmental explosive, and it causes it to explode for both double damage and double range. It has a two-turn cooldown, 
it's a turn ending action, and it doesn't break shadow. This is an incredibly strong ability considering it's one of the first you unlock. Most explosives normally do about 6 damage, and the blast radius is quite small. With remote start, you instead get a 12 damage explosion, that has a decently sized blast radius. 12 damage is a lot for this early in the game, and will typically one hit kill most enemies until you start getting into the mid to late game. While it is dependent on having an environmental explosive to target, and having the enemies stand near enough to it, most maps usually have quite a lot. In particular, urban maps often have several cars, which are both quite big, and are often used as cover by enemies. It's one of those abilities that's not useful all the time, but when it is, it's devastating. Blood Trail is a passive ability that increases your damage by plus one, when shooting at targets that have been wounded that turn. This ability really cements the Reaper's role as a finisher. By default, the Vector Rifle is even weaker than the Assault Rifle, and the gap gets worse as you tech up. Blood Trail just helps to mitigate this a little bit. In the beginning, it's not that useful, because you're usually trying to conserve your shadow. Later on though, there are some abilities that combine quite well with this. While it's not a great ability to pick up right away, it is pretty good to double back for it later. Watch my back. Next up, at Sergeant Rank, you have Target Definition and Shrapnel. Target Definition is a passive that marks enemies that the Reaper sees, allowing you to see their movements in the fog of war. This is just a way to keep tabs on enemies when they move out of your line of sight. The ability to always know where pods are is indeed very valuable, and a lot of people swear by this ability, saying it's near mandatory. Personally, I find that I'm usually able to keep my reaper inside of the pods I'm interested in, and target definition doesn't end up adding all that much. The only real downside of this ability, is that it doesn't skip marked enemies when they're in the fog of war. You have to wait for each pod to slowly walk to their destination each turn. I'm impatient, and this is another reason why I tend to skip this. Their patrol is coming. Shrapnel is another passive that makes the Claymore have plus 3 damage, plus 1 shred, and an increased blast radius. This is just a straight upgrade to the Claymore, allowing it to remain relevant in the mid-game. 8 damage will instantly kill advanced troopers, but not on legend, and will take a chunk out of most other enemies. The blast area goes from 3 to 5 tiles, which makes throwing it a lot less strict, and gives you more options to catch multiple pods or other objects in the blast. A delicate placement. I like the claymore, and this is just a nice upgrade to have. At Lieutenant, you have Silent Killer, Distraction, and Needle. Silent Killer is probably the most poorly explained ability in the game. It's a passive that makes it so that kill shots don't increase the chance to break shadow. On paper, this sounds somewhat mediocre, as you're used to your first shot always being a 50-50 roll. To explain why this ability is actually really good, we need to go back and look at shadow again. What actually happens with Shadow is that your chance to break concealment starts at zero. Every time you take an action that has a Shadow roll, it first adjusts the odds, and then does the actual roll. So normally when you take your first shot, it sets the Shadow roll chance to 50, and then does the roll to see if you break Shadow. This ability just removes that first step if your shot is a kill shot. What this means is that, as long as every shot the Reaper takes is a kill shot, their chance to break shadow is always zero. I cannot hunt with this is one of the abilities that Blood Trail combines well with. If it's a kill shot, then chances are you've softened them up with another unit already, so the plus one damage bonus just helps to seal the deal. The only thing you really have to keep in mind with this ability, is actually landing the shot. But since Reapers have such great accuracy anyway, it's not that big of a factor. Advent 
Distraction is a passive ability that makes you re-enter shadow if you get a kill with the claymore. It's just another way to get shadow if you're out of charges or want to save them. Most of the time, this ability might seem excessive. Ideally your reaper wants to remain in shadow for as long as possible, and if you do use a claymore, it's usually as part of an ambush, while you're still concealed. The benefit of this ability is that it doesn't have to be the reaper that detonates the claymore. This means you can do stuff like throw out a claymore, shoot someone else, and then have another unit detonate the claymore to put the reaper back into shadow. This still ends up as a fairly niche ability though, especially compared to some of the other options. Needle is another passive, this time making shots from shadow ignore two points of armor. This allows the reaper to be much more consistent with its damage output. The main issue with this ability is that typically you're trying to remove armor from targets, before your other units take shots at it. At least for me, my reapers don't usually end up shooting at enemies that still have armor. I'd only really see it being helpful on the most heavily armored units in the game, which is a bit of an edge case. At Captain, Rank 4, you get Sting and Soul Harvest. Sting is an active ability where you take a shot that's guaranteed to remain in shadow. You get one charge per mission. There's not much to say about this ability. It's just a fallback option if you really need to take a shot, but don't want to lose shadow. Though with the previous ability, Silent Killer, you can usually get as many shots as you need. Soul Harvest is a passive ability that gives you plus 5 crit chance for each kill, up to a maximum of plus 20. This can be a nice ability for boosting damage, but it doesn't really work well with other abilities. Silent Killer, for example, requires you to have guaranteed kill shots. Even with the full plus 20 crit chance, you still need quite a bit more to get to 100%. In addition, to get the plus 20, you need the Reaper to kill 4 enemies in the mission, ideally with some left over to use the crit bonus on. If you farm kills on Lost, this can be pretty easy to set up, but with regular missions, you'll likely have to go out of your way to maximize this. To me, it's one of those abilities that's not bad, it just takes too much setup for too little benefit. For Major, there's Highlands and Banish. Highlands is a passive that just gives you an additional claim or charge. This lets you be more liberal with your explosives, allowing you to use one early and still have another just in case, or for a later pod. It's essentially the Grenadier's Heavy Ordnance, but for Reapers. The difference is that Reapers can use them more aggressively, in ambushes, and with an ability we'll talk about next. Banish is the Reaper's main multi-damage ability. It's an active ability where you fire at a target with minus 15 aim, and keep firing until it either dies, or you run out of ammo. You get one charge, and it always breaks shadow. Obviously, this is why you want an expanded magazine and repeater. With a superior expanded magazine, and the continent bonus or resistance order, this gives you 7 shots. This is more than enough to cripple or outright kill any enemy in the game, provided they don't have any armor remaining. This is another ability that doesn't benefit from Soul Harvest, because it cannot crit on any shot. Your repeater can proc though, which allows you to pretty reliably execute most tough enemies. This is basically a no-brainer, like most of the multi-damage abilities. Finally, at Colonel, we have Homing Mine and Annihilate. Homing Mine is an active ability that allows you to throw a claymore that sticks to an enemy, and detonates when they take damage. It shares charges with claymore, which means it also benefits from the Highlands ability. This gives you a little more flexibility when setting up ambushes. Now you don't need to worry about the pod moving away after you've placed it. As long as you have shrapnel, 
then the blast should still be big enough to catch any other pod members. Says I am to obey. There are a few interesting things to mention. First, because you are now shooting the enemy rather than the claymore itself, shots by the reaper will now have to do a shadow roll, instead of always staying in shadow. However, you can actually throw this further than you normally could with the claymore. You can target any enemy the reaper can see. Lastly, and not mentioned anywhere, is that homing mine actually guarantees the first shot that you take. This means it combines really well with abilities like banish, chain shot on grenadiers, and rapid fire on rangers, allowing you to guarantee the first hit, and also detonate the claymore. While it's not quite as good as banish, and it requires several previous abilities to get the most out of it, it can be a really useful tool. Finally, Annihilate is a passive ability that upgrades Banish, allowing it to keep shooting at other targets if the first one is killed. While this is a useful fallback, it assumes that you both have a high value target that you want to empty your magazine on, and additional active enemies to switch to if you kill that first target. Considering how late in the ability tree this is, its uses are fairly limited. Colonel rank abilities cost 25 AP to unlock, so you could use these points to double back and get some of the other great abilities instead. Depending on available ability points, my reapers usually have remote start, shrapnel, silent killer, banish, highlands, and homing mine. Aside from that, I'd definitely go back for blood trail if I have any AP spare. Reapers are fantastic at providing intel, and this build gives you plenty of tools to allow them to also deal good damage while remaining concealed.